If you like my videos, I save the coolest stuff for the Patreon. You can sign up for 10 bucks and instantly get all of the videos. You can quit whenever you want, of course. I do private tutoring as well. My email is below if anyone is interested. Hello, welcome back. Today we're talking about pawns. Pawns are a very interesting class. They are very similar to actor, but they have a couple of nice little things that come along with them. The first one is built-in movement capability. Um, this comes in the form of components. We talked about components really briefly, but basically there is this thing called the pawn movement component, and it will handle movement for you. So in this video, we're going to be using that. It also comes with the ability to read input from a mouse keyboard controller, a Nintendo Switch controller, you know, absolutely anything you can think of is probably supported. Um, but it's really handy because, you know, a character, obviously, if I press W, I want my character to run forward. Or if I click my mouse, I want the character to shoot his gun, you know. So the ability to read and then react to input is a very, very important part of why a pawn is so powerful. So anything that the character is going to be controlling... Um, pawn is pretty much what you're looking for. So in this video we're going to make a pawn and we're going to make a really simple pawn where you can use WASD to move it around. It's pretty simple but hey <laughs> I don't want to confuse anyone so we're going to start simple and I'll show you how to do it in this video. Okay so once you've made your pawn it's going to look something like this. Now this is basically like I said it's almost the exact same as actor. The only function that you actually get that's extra is this one here, setup player input component. This function passes in a input component and we use the input component to define um, stuff like, hey, when I press W, I want the player to go forward or when I click, I want to shoot my gun. So you set up all that stuff in there. One thing that I'm just going to do just to get out of the way is if you go to mypawn.cpp, um, all you have to do is include these two header files. That's because we're using these two components. So you need to include that. Um, otherwise, the code will not compile. So make sure you include what I've got here. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is inside of the my pawn function, I'm going to set up a couple of inputs. So I'm going to make two functions here. We'll go void move forward. So that function is going to move us forward by a certain amount. And the amount is going to be float value. And I'm also going to have move right. So we're having two functions and it will move you either forward or right um, by a certain value. So there's a certain amount that it's going to move you by. If you have this thing called visual assist, you can um, do that. If you don't have visual assist, you can click quick actions and then create definition. It's another way to do it. Okay, so we have two functions, move forward and move right. Now, there are two types of input actions. There is an input action and there is a access um, action. I believe it's action mapping and access mapping. So action mapping is used for something that is one-to-one. -one. So you would click your mouse and then a bullet would shoot. That would be an action mapping. An access mapping is used for things that have an amount so for example a joystick you can half press the joystick forward right and that would be 0 0.5 and then if I fully press the joystick forward it would be 1 so that's um, that's an axis mapping so there's two types there's axis and action so what we're using in this video is called an axis mapping I'm gonna say that if I press W that's a value of 1 for moving forward and if I press S it's a value of negative 1 for moving forward um, this will sort of make sense in a little bit, and we'll actually go into the engine and set up some access mappings, just so you can see what they are. But um, for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type player input component, and then bind access. This is how you set up a new access mapping. The first thing we need is the name, and um, we haven't made the name yet. You actually do this inside of the engine, so I'll show you me doing that in a bit. But for now. Um, I'm just going to call this move forward. You want to type this. And then you need to tell it what function. Um, and the function in this case is my pawn move forward. And that should be all you need. I'm going to copy this. And this time we're going to do move right. Like that. And all we're going to do is we're going to add movement input. Pawns have a function called add movement input. 
actors do not have this function and it will let you move in a certain direction. Now because this function is called move forward, we simply just want to move in the direction that is forward. So to get the direction that is forward for my actor, we use this function here. It's called get actor forward vector. And then you can do a scale value and there's some other options, but we'll just do value. And then for moving right, you do add movement input, get actor right vector, and then value as well. And we'll set it up so that if you press S, it's going to pass a negative value, which will mean it's basically getting the backwards vector. It's moving backwards, if that makes sense. Um, so that should be enough for now. Now, one thing that will happen is you can add movement input, but an unfortunate thing that happens is if you do not have a movement component, this function basically doesn't do anything. And that's why I have this thing here, floating pawn movement. So we're going to create a new component. I'll just come into the constructor. And remember, to create a component, we use create default subobject. And we're making you floating pawn movement. And you have to give it a name. I'm just going to call this pawn movement. Um, the reason it's called floating pawn movement is because this movement component, it does not have gravity. Um, so you're just floating essentially. There is a more complex type of movement component and it's called character movement component. And that actually includes the ability to crouch and it includes gravity and the ability to swim and loads of crazy stuff. Um, but obviously, just in the interest of keeping things nice and simple, um, we're just going to use this one for now. Um, so we need something, you remember we had the first issue that when I made my actor in the first video, we couldn't see it. So we had to add some components to it so that we could see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a use static mesh component. I'm going to call this cube mesh. And so that we can access it within the editor, we're going to put edit anywhere. And one other thing that we need is we need a camera. We need to define where the camera um, is going to be. And I want the camera to be behind the player. So to actually make that, we need to make a U camera component. We're getting an error because we need to include a header file for the camera. But since we're in the .h file, we can just get rid of that for now by typing class. And now let's create them. So we'll do a cube mesh. And I called it camera mesh. We just want to call it camera. Cool. So we have two components in our pawn. We have a cube mesh, which allows us to have a mesh that we can actually see. And we have a camera as well, because we need to define where we're actually going to be, you know, what is our point of view when we're controlling the pawn. And since it has this floating pawn movement, add movement input's actually going to do something. So at this point, I think we're actually ready to go. Um, I'll try that out. We're going to go ahead and click play to run the uh, debugger. And the last thing to do before we actually have a moving pawn that we'll be able to see is to set up these action mappings. You remember I typed in move forward and I typed in move right. Uh, but right now these mappings aren't actually set up, so we'll set them up in the editor. Also, I'm aware that a lot of people are probably confused at this point. There's, there is a lot to take in. I'm not acting like this is real simple stuff. This is quite a bit of information to take in. Um, and then one more thing is you need to include the camera component. If you don't include this, um, what happens is the code won't compile. So make sure you have that line. Then go ahead and save and uh, hit play. And hopefully it works. <laughs> okay, so just before we use those access mappings inside of my code, but we didn't actually set them up in the editor. To set them up in the editor, you want to go to edit, project settings, and then down here you'll see input. Now there's two sections, like I talked about, there's action and axis. We're going to make two axis mappings. You can just click plus to add a new one. Make sure that they are the same names as the one you used in code. You want to type in the key as W 
and just copy what I have here. W is a 1, S is negative 1, meaning move backwards, A is obviously to move right, and then D is negative 1, which is going to move us left. At this point, we can take our C++ class, MyPorn, drag them into the level. And here's the really cool thing. If you move this up a little bit, you can actually see the camera now. So that's where your point of view will be. If you click on Cube Mesh, you can select a cube, or a, I'm going to use the sphere. And then we can click on the camera, and we can sort of like move the camera back and put it wherever you want it. And... You can hit play. Now one thing that's going to happen, we're not playing as this pawn yet. To um, automatically play as the pawn, there's actually a better way to do this, but to automatically play as the pawn, if you go into the search box and type in possess, you can see auto possess player, select player zero, and that will automatically let you play as the cube. And you can see now um, we can move around. I actually set my mappings up wrong, by the way. I think A and D were around the wrong way. Yeah, this needs to be negative one, and this one needs to be one. So you can hit play, and now you'll be able to sort of move around as a sphere. Um, I am aware this is very, very simple stuff, but I did not want to confuse anyone or make anything, you know, super complicated right away. Um, but one cool thing I'm going to show you before we end the video is blueprints. Notice before the way I did that was kind of stupid. I dragged my pawn in, and then I clicked, and I made a sphere, and I made a camera, and whatnot. But that's actually quite a lot of um, messing about. And what if I wanted to spawn this thing at runtime during the game's already running, right? Well, a good alternative is what we're going to do. We'll delete this. Get rid of this. We're going to right-click on my pawn and create a blueprint class based on it. And this will allow us to set the pawn up before we drag it into the level, which is way more powerful than you might think. Really, really handy. Um, the typical naming convention if you're making a blueprint is you type BP underscore and then the name of it. So BP my pawn. And now we can click on cube mesh, we can go to static mesh, we can choose whatever we want, maybe a material sphere. We can take the camera, pull it back, do that, whatever, compile and save. The reason this is so cool is because now we can just take the blueprint and just drag it in. You can see it's already right there. Um, for some reason it moved the sphere, give me a sec. There we go, hit play. Remember that we also need the auto possess turned on. Um, later on, we will not use auto possess player. This is just a quick way to get into the game and play. And there you go. Super, super basic. And it actually has some collision. You can see we can't move through the, um, the chairs, which is kind of cool as well. So I know this has been really simple. Believe me, we'll make a way cooler example um, of a pawn later on. We'll get into some really complicated examples with jumping and all sorts of cool stuff. And that actually lies, all of the power for jumping and swimming and all that cool stuff is all inside of this exciting class called Character. Pawn is kind of really basic. It doesn't really have a lot of um, features in it. Character actually has the ability to like walk around, jump, um, lots of different animation stuff. So uh, we'll be talking about character later on anyway, probably a few videos away. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's been very basic, but I'll see you guys in the next video.